you've worked so hard to build muscle, to put any kind of lean mass on. And the reality is, as soon as you start cutting calories or you start trying to lose some body fat, the last thing you wanna deal with is losing your muscle, simply because it is the biggest driver of your metabolism. If you lose that muscle, you're losing a lot of your metabolism. So we have to protect it. So I've got a few ways that are really gonna help you out. If you stick with me through the entirety of this video, I'm gonna break down exactly what you can do to preserve your muscle when you're cutting or you're just trying to burn some body fat. You're tuned into the internet's leading performance, nutrition, and fat loss channel. New videos Tuesday, Friday, and Sunday at 7 a.m. Pacific time and a bunch throughout the week as well. Go ahead and hit that red subscribe button. That way you are part of the team. And then go ahead and hit that bell icon. That's gonna allow you to turn on notifications so you know whenever I post a new video, or more importantly, whenever I do a live broadcast. I also wanna make sure that you check out Thrive Market down in the description. So Thrive Market is awesome. Literally, they've made it so guys like me that don't really like to go to the grocery store can get their groceries delivered right to their doorstep. And it's cheaper than the grocery store. So the special deal for those that watch my channel, special deal for those that are part of my tribe. So if you check out the link in the description after you watch this video, you can get my keto box, my fasting box, all at a great discount, cheaper than the grocery store. Now let's get to some anti-muscle loss science. Okay, getting right to the chase here. Number one is one you've probably heard before. I want you to continue to lift heavy. Okay, I don't care if you're male, female, strong, not strong, lift heavy, relatively speaking. And I mean, be in that six repetition range, be in that eight repetition range, possibly even lower, which I'll talk about in a second. You see, what happens is simply the act of lifting heavy activates something known as mTOR. Okay, mTOR is going to allow the anabolic muscle building switch, or in this case, muscle preservation switch, to turn on. Okay, we want that switch turned on. That way, when you're in a caloric deficit, that switch isn't going to allow you to break down a lot of muscle. Now, you don't want mTOR activated all the time because it can blunt fat loss, but you want it activated periodically when you're lifting so it turns on that muscle preservation. Now, if you're keto, which a lot of my fan base is, a lot of my viewers are, you're gonna wanna train in a low repetition range. We're talking like two to four reps, and I can talk a little bit more about that in other videos, but the reality is the creatine phosphate system allows you to utilize an energy source within the body that has nothing to do with carbohydrates. So that means if you're deprived of carbs, like you're on keto or low carb, you're going to still be able to have your strength for one to three reps. You might as well utilize that, otherwise your performance can kind of wane with it. Now, there's an interesting study that was published in the journal Nutrients. It was a meta-analysis, so it looked at a lot of different studies. I like this one because it really proves how lifting heavy, relatively speaking, again, whoever you are, has a powerful effect on muscle loss. So what they did is they looked at caloric restriction with resistance training versus caloric restriction without resistance training. The nutrition was the exact same. The macronutrients were the exact same in both groups, okay? So one group didn't eat a lot, but they weight trained. Another group didn't eat a lot, but they didn't weight train. The result, the resistance training group reduced 93.5% of their calorie restricted induced muscle loss. They preserved almost all their muscle. They got rid of the risk. So simply weight training ended up making it so that they did not lose the muscle. Whereas if they weren't weight training, they lost 93.5% more muscle. That's pretty significant. Okay, now let's go ahead and move into number two. Now, I don't care if you're keto or not, this is a strategic process to help you get more out of your cutting phase or fat burning phase or summer body phase, okay? What I see a lot of people do, whether they're bodybuilders or whether they're people that are just getting ready for a photo shoot or for the beach, is they automatically cut their carbs. It's just kind of what they do. They may not go keto, but they cut their carbs. It's like the first thing that they do. And the reality is, is that low carb is so common, but people are generally afraid to push it a little bit lower and go keto because they think that by going keto, they're gonna burn up their muscle. Yet they're sitting in this gray area of low carb, which is actually more dangerous. If you go low carb, you're better off to go further and go all the way to keto because there's huge muscle preserving mechanisms that kick in and that muscle preservation is what we want. You're gonna lose more muscle and be in a dangerous position by going low carb than you would be by going ultra low carb. So here's a study that backs that up. The Journal International Society of Sports Nutrition, now they publish a lot of things surrounding keto, but this particular study took a look at 26 people that were doing a very low carb ketogenic diet versus traditional. So they split them into two groups. Now they did the exact same workouts, the exact same training, okay? They didn't change anything up there. The only thing that was different was their keto diet or not keto diet. The results were insane. 
the very low carb keto diet ended up having lean body mass increases of 4.3 kilograms. Increased their body mass by terms, in terms of lean body mass. Okay, their fat went down 2.2 kilograms. That's about five pounds. Okay, so they built muscle and burned fat. Compared to the normal group that was not keto, lean body mass, still a nice increase because they were rate training, 2.2 kilograms, modest, but not as good as the keto, and fat loss was only 1.5 kilograms. So keto diet preserved way more muscle and still actually burned more fat. Whereas if it was just low carb, it probably wouldn't have been the case. So you wanna do targeted keto. Now the reason I say targeted, taking this one step further, targeted is where you have about 20, maybe 30 grams of carbohydrates right after your weight training and that's it. Okay, no other carbs other than what's gonna come from veggies and maybe some almonds and stuff like that. That's called targeted ketogenic, also known as backloading. And I feel like if you're weight training and you're cutting and you're trying to burn fat, but still maintain some muscle for a photo shoot or a bodybuilding competition or swimsuit, whatever, that's gonna be a strategic way. I have other videos on that too. Okay, number three is another training thing. We've got high intensity interval training and it's not because it burns more fat. It does, but that's not why it's here. It actually preserves muscle. Now, this is interesting. There's some relatively new science that's been talking about how HIT activates different muscle groups, muscle fibers, which actually stimulate more, uh, not only a metabolism boost, but a muscle preservation mechanism. So the Journal of Diabetes Research published a study. Okay, they did this. They did two groups. One group that did 90% intensity for eight seconds, followed by a 12 second rest. Okay, so quick intervals, compared to another group that did constant load. So they did moderate, like 65% of their maximum intensity for about 40 minutes. So moderate intensity, but going a longer duration rather than doing intervals. What they found at the end of the study was that there was a significant decrease in the constant and it came down to muscle mass. Okay, there's significant decrease of muscle mass if they were doing a longer duration, moderate intensity. Now compare that to the interval group, no change at all. They didn't lose any lean body mass. They didn't lose anything at all. There was no change. So they still had fat loss, but no muscle loss. That was cool. And this has to do with what's called type two muscle fiber activation. I want you to think of something. Type one muscle fibers are the muscle fibers that give us the power when we're running. They're endurance muscles, okay? Type two are the muscle fibers that give us power. Okay, first of all, we don't wanna lose those type two. We wanna keep them maintained as much as we can. And HIT's gonna allow that because it activates type two. But think of it like this. Type one are muscle fibers that are designed for endurance. So they're designed to not break down. If you look at a, a runner, a marathon runner, or someone that's an ultra marathon runner or a very conditioned endurance athlete, they have these long sinewy muscles. Well, they're not really concerned with losing those muscles because they're not gonna go anywhere. They are the kind of muscle that is designed to withstand calorie restriction and designed to withstand a lot of just endurance work. Whereas type two is what gives us our mass and generates a lot of our metabolism. So HIIT training keeps the type two whereas a lot of cardio just conditions the type one and gets rid of type two. Lastly is number four, and this is a pretty basic one. If you're not going low carb, if you're not going keto, it's very important to keep your protein moderately high. Now this goes against the grain of some of the things that I've said before. So you might be wondering, wait, Thomas, I thought you were big on not having a lot of protein. Well, that's because I'm usually talking about a lower carb lifestyle. Whereas with keto, you don't need a lot of protein because the muscle sparing effects are through the fat. Okay, that's what's happening there. With keto, you're saving muscle because the fats are acting as a buffer. If you're not keto, protein becomes important because otherwise your body starts trying to break it down. And protein becomes important because 30% of the calories that you actually have in protein are used up just in digesting the protein. So it's very thermogenic, it's powerful. Okay, so you wanna keep your protein higher if you're not keto. Without keto buffer, you need more, simply put. Now, gluconeogenesis, let's touch on something complicated for a second. And I want you to stick with me because it will make sense. Okay, gluconeogenesis is where your body takes protein and turns it in to sugar. It's a natural thing. So you might be wondering, well, if I consume too much protein, is it gonna make me fat? If you consume a ton of protein, yes. But here's the interesting thing. When we actually take protein and convert it into carbohydrates for energy, which our body does, it takes a lot of energy to do that. In fact, we actually lose weight in the process of converting protein to carbs because it's such a metabolically expensive process. So don't be afraid to have higher amounts of protein. I am just a fan of getting by with less if you can via a ketogenic pathway. If you're not keto, don't be afraid of extra protein as long as it's organic, good, clean, quality stuff. 
it doesn't have that same effect on the kidneys that people think it does. So anyway, this about sums it up, okay? Broken it down into the four main things. Of course, we can throw intermittent fasting in there, but I wanted to make this video good for the masses, just good for people that are trying to lose weight for summer, trying to lose weight to get in that bikini body or get that swimsuit body, whatever you name it. So as always, make sure you're keeping it locked in here on my channel. If you have ideas for future videos, you want me to expand on this, just put it down in the comments. See you soon.